the UNHR Department of One trying to figure out how to balance task and strategy while keeping up with changes in regulatory compliance? Do you need a fresh outlook on old topics? Then stop what you're doing, grab your coffee, and get ready to recharge. If you have people, you have problems to solve and things to do. Your host is Brenda Neckvottle, a 20-year human resource professional, ready to explore the HR industry with veterans of business and life with fresh eyes and new ideas. Learn about the rapidly evolving changes in employment law around the country, as well as new tactics to deploy and build engagement in your work. If you're looking to implement new practices to make your job easier in HR, then this podcast is for you. Hey there, and welcome to the Best Practices in Human Resource podcast. It is, oh my gosh, episode 115. Holy moly. Yeah, that is a, we've been doing this a long time, (laughs) but you know what? Not as long as some others. And, uh, <clears throat> yep, we're not stopping anytime soon. I'm not stopping anytime soon. Hey, listen, I am Brenda, the HR lady, and I'd like to thank you for listening to the show. If you're a returning listener, you guys are awesome. You guys rock. Thank you so much for returning for yet another episode. And if you're a first time listener, I want to welcome you in. I am here to help you and share the strategic and the tactical HR knowledge so that you can master the what and the how in this field, because look in the human resource business, We are in the human business, and that means a greater number of dynamics in the workplace to balance and manage. So if you have been listening for a while, I have a little ask because we got some really awesome people listening to the show, and uh, we ask that you guys leave a five-star review. That's what we need. And the reason why we do it is the reason why we ask that is that first off, there are other really great people like you out there who are looking for information like this. And one of the ways that we can help them out is those reviews keep us up at the very top of the search engine and doing the algorithms and all that other good stuff. And so <clears throat> if there's a way that we can make that happen, you guys are absolutely, absolutely the key to making that happen. So uh, listen, if you do that, I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Uh, we just had look, just had the book come out. It's been awesome. We're getting a lot of really positive feedback on it. Uh, very excited about it. If you haven't heard yet, um, I just released a book. It became a bestseller. It is called The Best Practices in Human Resources, How to Claw Your Way from Wannabe to VP. So uh, for those of you who had helped make it a bestseller, thank you so, oh my gosh, so very much. What a ride that's been. It's been pretty awesome. And you can find it over on Amazon.com by simply searching Brenda the HR Lady. And and you know what what it is? It's my story on how I got into the the practice of human resources. All of, all of, all of the obstacles, at least the big ones that I faced, the ones that I remembered. I think there's a lot that I put out in my mind. But then I share with you the actual things that I did over the years that helped me get to the level that I wanted to be. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm I'm getting a lot of feedback. People really enjoy it. I have one person, she's like, yeah, I read it in a day. I'm like, what do you mean you read it in a day? You texted me that you got it at 5 p.m. And she goes, yeah, I know. I read it in like just a few hours. I was like, holy cow. So that was pretty cool. Um... Yeah, so definitely watch out for that. Uh, we got some good stuff coming out. And you know what? We've got some other really awesome things that are happening. Um, I Right now, I am about ready to start traveling in July. Matter of fact, I'm coming to Baltimore, Dallas, and Provo, Utah. Uh, we're going to talk about winning in HR. And I just sent out an email today kind of talking about... You know, what what happens, you know, when the when you feel like your bottom is falling out? Because it can in this industry. Matter of fact, it can in any job, it can in anywhere in your life. But you know what? It's what you do at your lowest that gets you up out of that pit that's gonna make a difference. It's gonna make a difference faster. It's gonna you're not gonna have to battle so much. And you know, we got some really, really, really great insights on that. And um, you know, my my partner and shine Suzanne, the evil HR lady, <laughs> Lucas, uh, we're, she's coming to the United States. Uh, you know, we do, we do the real HR show together. She lives in Switzerland and we are, we're traveling while she's here and we're going to be doing a lot of really great things. So look, check it out, you know, jump over to Brenda, the HR and, uh, check it out for yourself. You know, see if it's something that's interested. We're going to be doing a giveaway. Actually, we are doing a giveaway. Um, We are going to give away a care package for up to $400 in value, which includes 
if you are a female and we we do the it's a random drawing if you are a female and you win we are including a really 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 cute coach handbag and if you're a guy then we're actually going to give you some really nice to me stuff so um yeah so if you want to get in on that action and, and treat yourself to something nice, plus also you can get recertification credits as well as that necessary boost in confidence, that necessary boost that you need to get you out of whatever you're in, or you know what, just take you to the next level in this industry, then you know what, come out and see us. Like I said, we're going to be in, we're going to be in Baltimore on July 19th. We're going to be in Dallas on July 21st, and we're going to be in Provo, Utah on the 22nd. Not to mention, while we're in Provo, um, I'm going to be doing uh, a session on active shooter training on how you can actually really kind of take down the fear, like take that way down low on issuing and, and having uh, active shooter training in your in a workplace, but then also really increase the confidence uh, in in your employees, because like, this is something that's not going to go anywhere. I mean, it, it's it's getting worse every year. It's getting worse. It's increasing. Um, it, it's it <laughs> it's just not going to stop. So it's a it's a great opportunity for those. We're going to be doing it in Provo, but we're going to stream it out to those who are in uh, Baltimore and in Dallas as part of this, and that gives you an opportunity to earn up to eight. Or excuse me, total of six uh, recertification credits by participating in all sessions that'll be put towards your SHRM and your HRCI credentials. We are going to have uh, the active shooter training uh, available a little bit later uh, as a freestanding individual course and then also have the ability to come out and work with you guys one-on-one -on, -one on something like that. So there's a lot of, a lot of really good stuff that's happening and that'll happen at some point in time. All right, so let's get rolling with this. We got... A really juicy topic. We got stuff. You probably hear the dog breathing, <laughs> panting, all that heavy breathing. It's not me. It's the dog. Um, we got a really juicy topic that I want to talk about today. And um, yeah, it's it's actually happening as we speak, which is not something I really get a chance to, to talk about. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to preface this by saying I'm, I'm mixed. I, I'm split brained on this whole situation. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. Um. If you haven't already yet tried Naked Warrior Recovery's products, I got a new one for you. Are you ready? Two words. Bath bomb. <laughs> Holy cow. There's, there's another two words for you. Holy cow. What a difference. What an amazing product he's got. Oh, my word. I, the other day I was in the gym. And I came out and I was feeling just absolutely just jacked. I mean, it's just, I, I don't, I had a particularly hard workout. I really had to fight through it the entire time. Uh, you know, I wasn't in the right mindset to begin with and that just made it more difficult. But I, I challenged myself even more by adding a little bit weight to just about everything that I was doing in my strength training. And I came home and it was like one of those moments where I couldn't even hold a pen and write. <laughs> I was just all shaky uh, because of the weight. And you know what? I decided to try. I had just gotten them. I tried it out. I threw a, I took a bath at like, you know, what, three in the afternoon. Threw a bath bomb in there. And I got to tell you something. Holy cow. My overall, overall feeling was just, I, it was like zen. I mean, I'm, I'm not joking with you. It was absolutely very peaceful. And I didn't even try the CBD gummy at the same time. I just, it was just the bath. I sat in there for about, I think, 30 minutes. And it was, uh, it was just amazing. So if you want to try something that's pretty great, doesn't have THC in it, you know what? You can try it. Get 20% off on your first order. Uh, visit uh, nw-recovery.com and use my code NAKEDHR. Uh, if you haven't heard what exactly that means, getting naked, uh, you know, jump on episode number 78 and listen to what Will has to say. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, you know, I don't get paid for this, but this is just something that has helped me out a lot. Uh, look, I'm getting older. <laughs> like, I'm knocking on 50 this year. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this summer I'm turning 50. And you know what? Things happen to your body at 50, and they 
start to happen just before that. <laughs> and and I'm not looking forward to finding out what ha- what comes next, but uh you know what? This is this is one way where I get an opportunity to absolutely absolutely crush it. So definitely check it out. And then also look, I want you guys if you haven't heard me talk about this this team just yet, this is a great opportunity for you to dig in and see what they're all about now. Um, Forest Capital Management is an independent financial advisory firm helping small and medium-sized businesses optimize their retirement plans. Now, look, there's all sorts of strategies that you can take when it comes to managing your retirement plans. You know, look, there's a lot of compliance that comes with that. But you know what? This is something where you don't want to be in the position of doing it wrong. You really, really don't. Okay. Um, It's one of those things where your retirement plan is instrumental to your employee's success in life after their work with you okay so why not help them out this is a really great way to reward them appropriately and they help plan sponsors like you ensure your 401k your 403b or whatever pension program that you have is designed and operating in a way that maximizes the success for your employees now to learn more i highly recommend you jump on their website reach out to their advisor his name is alex clegg really awesome guy uh, and see how you can improve your retirement plan. So visit Forest Capital at forestcapitalmanagement.com. That's forestcapitalmanagement.com. And you know what? <laughs> when I first learned about it, I wish I had somebody that I could talk to as well. I had a lot of wish I did, wish I could, or wish I had. And this is definitely one that I struggled in quite a bit until I actually got the hang of it. So having somebody around to talk to is just absolutely fantastic. So definitely check them out. There are approximately 2,500 members of the U.S. Special Operations community who transition out of active duty military service every single year. The Honor Foundation has dedicated its mission to serving these elite individuals on their journey to prepare for life once they take off the uniform. In the past few years, we've begun our own journey to reach this number, launching three physical campuses in San Diego, California, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and near Wilmington, North Carolina along with a virtual campus to reach members of the community anywhere on the planet. I spent 26 years in the special operations community as a SEAL. I graduated from THS program, I served on the board of directors, and now I'm proud to lead this organization into the future to continue assisting these transitioning service members and their families. Our dedicated team, our world-class program, and our incredible tribes of supporters are standing by to help THF alumni and future fellows and are committed to providing the best possible support system and resources to better serve this community. Our vision for the Honor Foundation is clear, to impact every transitioning service member from the U.S. Special Operations Enterprise through our programs and support, and to be a catalyst for overhauling the entire DOD transition program. It's a big task, but the community deserves it, and we're driving full steam ahead to make this a reality. If you've been inspired with what the Honor Foundation's done in the last five years, I welcome you all to join us as we craft the next chapter in defining what it means to serve others with honor for life. All right, so if you have been paying attention to the news this past weekend, we've actually, you know, we actually have something that's like going on that I can share like as a case study because if you've been following me you know how much i love case studies so let me me, if you haven't heard what's going on over this past weekend because i haven't really yet even told you what it is um let me catch you guys up so uh there's a a weather reporter cbs affiliated weather reporter in detroit by the name of april moss and she promised on the air sunday on air that she would produce what she says is proof of discrimination that is going on in their newsroom and in their company And she is now no longer employed at the station. And it's interesting because not only and I and not only did she come out and share this in the middle of her broadcast, and I'm going to play that sound clip for you in just a a minute. There's other things that have taken place since then. All right. So I'm going to definitely spend some time breaking this down because this is like a major employee issue. All right. And there's a lot of ramifications that are going to take place from this. So I want to tell you that I'm very split brained about all of this. And what I mean by that is, is that I can see both sides of the coin on this situation. 
There's a lot to learn from this, and it's an it's an evolving beast right now. Now it's it's been a little bit quiet overnight, but there's a lot of hoofspa that has come out of this. There's ramifications for the affiliate station in Detroit. There's ramifications for parties involved. There's also ramifications for the national CBS in, uh, industry and broadcasting company as well. So hang on a second. I'm gonna, for, so first off, I'm going to play for you what it was exactly that she did. So here's the recording. Good evening and thanks for watching First Forecast. I'm meteorologist April Moss and happy Father's Day. Today we saw temperatures above normal again, topping out at 85 degrees at Metro Airport. Plenty of sunshine today, but all good things must come to an end and that starts as early as tomorrow morning with showers moving in around 8 a.m. And speaking of a brand new week, I will be sitting down this week with Project Veritas to discuss the discrimination that CBS is enforcing upon its employees. Tune in to Project Veritas for my full story. Now, later Monday, we will see those showers continuing through late morning, but by evening, we'll see dry conditions and more comfortable temperatures as well. Can you imagine what was going on in the sound room at that moment? All right. So now, even though she's been broadcasting from home because of COVID, um, that was a huge, huge bomb dropped on top of the station now on the surface yes <clears throat> i don't disagree with removing the employee from the company all right that's again i said on the surface because i know very little of the details like what i'm about ready to share with you is everything that i can do in research but on the surface when you have an employee that embarrasses a company like that I don't disagree that that's a bad thing to do. However, there's a lot of risk that comes with it. And, you know, one is that she's actually talking about workplace conditions, which therefore is now a concerted and protected activity. However, I don't know if it's so much concerted as it is simply protected because concerted requires more than one person. So here she's actually issuing a broadcast. So she's not having a dialogue with individuals or people. She's actually transmitting a one-way discussion but her freedom to talk about workplace conditions is very much protected under the national labor relations act okay so from so this is where i get split brained number one i don't disagree that having somebody that you know spit something like that out i don't disagree with you know the need or the, or the desire to go ahead and remove the person from the company however that comes with the risk okay so there you go the other piece is that it it goes beyond what you've just heard. And not only is she actually sharing this information with the listening public, she also went ahead and actually recorded another conversation that she had with a senior engineer sound engineer okay and that i take particular issue with and it's really just kind of interesting so here's i'll play that for you in just a second here so here's what newsweek is actually putting out okay so um a most recent article that newsweek had published is that april moss objected to the wwj tv's TV policies regarding COVID-19 testing and wearing masks inside our station, which is based on CDC state and local guidelines. And that was a direct quote uh, that came from the statement. And any suggestion that she was in any way a victim of discrimination due to her concerns about these policies is completely false. And in fact, we allow April to perform her weather anchor duties from home as we explored her concerns. So Moss was giving her weather report the night of Father's Day broadcast when she paused to say that she's going to be sitting down with this week the Project Veritas to discuss the discrimination that CBS is enforcing on its employees before casually concluding her forecast. We just heard that. Now, the article continues to go on <clears throat> and explains who Project Veritas actually is. So let me read to you who they are so you understand this. Um, all right, so uh, James O'Keefe established Project Veritas in 2011. This is directly from their website as a nonprofit journalism enterprise to continue his undercover reporting work. 
So today, Project Veritas investigates and exposes corruption, dishonesty, self-dealing, waste, fraud, and other misconduct in both public and private institutions to achieve a more ethical and transparent society. And O'Keefe serves uh, as the CEO and chairman of the board so he can continue to lead and teach his fellow journalists as well as protect and nurture the Project Veritas culture. As a legally recognized and fully reporting enterprise, Project Veritas is the most effective nonprofit on the national scene period, uh, according to them. <clears throat> and again, I'm, I'm reading this right from the website. Uh, Project Veritas journalists working undercover on their own or by and with and through idealistic insiders to bring to the American people the corrupt private truths hidden behind the walls of their institution. Throughout this website, there are in-depth and honest discussions of Project Veritas success, mistakes, and lies opponents tell O'Keefe and his organization, and mostly there are stories about successful impacts in the organization has led at the local, state, and national levels, <clears throat> ending federal funding of corrupt association of community organizations for reform or now, or ACORN for short, twice uh, forcing the New Hampshire legislator to tighten voter ID laws, a second time overriding the governor's veto, exposing political bias in the mainstream media outlets like CNN, and a report led to ABC's news suspending the senior correspondent David Wright and taking him off for all political coverage upon his return. The biggest audience for any Project Veritas video was released of the hot mic confession by ABC News anchor Amy Robosh to her studio crew. She had the whole Jeffrey Epstein story, but her network suppressed it because of pressure from the British royal family. Maybe better than that, the ABC News insider who gave Project Veritas the tape is still inside ABC News. When Project Veritas takes on an investigation, the pattern is clear. Project Veritas launches an investigation with placement of our undercover journalists. The rollout of our findings create a growing and uncontainable firestorm of press coverage. Corruption is exposed, leaders resign, and organizations are shut down. <clears throat> Project Veritas gets immediate, measurable, and impactful results, and our return on investment is unparalleled. There are many ways to be part of Project Veritas from the beginning, from excuse me, becoming an insider, undercover journalist, a video editor, or contributor. Project Veritas is a registered 501c3 organization. And Project Veritas does not advocate specific resolutions to the issues that are raised through the investigations, nor do we encourage other to, others to do so. Our goal is to inform the public of wrongdoing and allow the public to make judgments on the issue. So their mission is to investigate and expose corruption, dishonesty, self-dealing, waste, fraud, and other misconduct in both public and private institutions in order to achieve a more ethical and transparent society. And their core values talk about moral courage. Courage is the virtue that sustains all others. We choose to overcome our fears. Others are, we are all leaders, turning people into leaders, complete, completed staff work and ownership. Collaboration, best not to work in silos. No one individual is as smart as all of us. Resilience, persistence, and determination alone are omni-important, are omnipotent. <laughs> Excuse me. Omni-important, listen to me. Never, ever, ever give up. <clears throat> we don't let mistakes or setbacks discourage us. Pursue perfection, knowing full well you will never attain it. Mission-driven, the, the best people are motivated by purpose. We are passionate and truly believe in our cause. We must be externally focused, not internally focused. Make the status quo do the impossible. We move mountains. Failure is not an option. We do whatever it takes and be at the tip of the spear. We are a lost leader. We do not shy away from conflict or litigation. So they have also ethical values as well as rule number one, the truth is paramount. Number two, we do not break the law. Number three, we adhere to the First Amendment rights of others. Number four, the Zekman test, which I want to help you understand what that is. The Zekman test is the undercover investigations that they pursue are judged by us to be of vital public interest and profound importance. The, the Zekman test is the baseline, which is undercover investigative reporting is necessary because there's no way to get the story. Whereas the Society of Professional Journalists allow for undercover techniques if undercover techniques are necessary to expose issues of vital public importance. And we believe that they are not only allowed, but they are required. <clears throat> Next is that we protect the innocent when possible. They believe in transparency. They verify and corroborate their stories and they evaluate the impact on third parties and newsworthiness of statements alone. And um, the raw video, in certain circumstances, they may release that raw video to the press or to the public. But as a rule, they typically do not. Um, subject and non 
anonymity. <laughs> I can't say that word. I just can't. You know what I mean. We investigate and question sources before promising. Yeah, that word again. It's just not going to come out right. So once we confirm, we will do everything in our power to protect the identity identity of our confidential sources. Uh, they believe in being accountable. <clears throat> they do not, no, not manufacture content. Uh, by not putting words in the investigative subject's mouths, we do not lead the horse to water, and their purpose really is focused to elicit the truth, and with great power comes great responsibility. So that is Project Veritas. So just to kind of give you a, an understanding. Now, I also want to share with you a revisit of the First Amendment, okay? And the First Amendment doesn't just simply mean that you can say whatever it is that you want to, what the First Amendment is made of is that Congress, basically, the law is that Congress shall not, shall make no law respecting an establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or <clears throat> of the right of people to peacefully assemble and petition the government for a redress of gr grievances. So basically what it's saying is that the government can't put laws in place to stifle what you have to say. However, there are things that are an exception to the freedom of speech, okay? And there's typically, there's like nine categories. There's obscenity, fighting words, defamation, which includes libel and slander, child pornography, perjury, blackmail, incitement to imminent lawless action, uh, true threats, and solicitation to, co to commit crime. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go back to our girl again. So this is just blown up. It, it, it's blown up all weekend. It's blown up into the beginning of the week. And there's a lot, there's a lot of intensity around masks, the continuous use of masks. It's just, it's complicated. Okay. Now, according to the Newsweek article, <clears throat> in their response to Project Veritas's upcoming story, CBS 62 failed to address any of the major issues raised by April Moss's recordings, which is what O'Keefe over Project Veritas has stated. <clears throat> That's what he directly said in his interview to Newsweek. Not to mention, or excuse me, there's no mention of company-wide efforts to push vaccinations on employees and, pu and the public. Instead, CBS aimed its focus at her personally in an effort to divert attention from the findings she presented to our organization. Now, she is the second journalist in a week to actually team up, team up with Project Veritas and announce on air that they would be blowing the whistle on what they say is bias in the newsroom. And eight days ago, Ivory Hecker of KRIV-TV, Fox 26 in Houston, told her audience, also, while delivering the news about the weather, I'm going to be releasing some recordings about what goes behind the scenes at Fox because it applies to you, the viewers. Now, she has secretly recorded videos which shows Hecker's boss belittling her for posting a story where a doctor says he used he uses hydrochloroquine, which is a, has been proven as a successful treatment for COVID-19. Let's take a listen to her broadcast outages across the region. Fox 26 reporter Ivory Hecker is live in Montgomery County to take a look at that aspect. Thanks, guys. That's right. Before we get to that story, I want to let you, the viewers, know that Fox Corp has been muzzling me to keep certain information from you, the viewers. And from what I'm gathering, I am not the only reporter being to, subjected to this. I am going to be releasing some recordings about what goes on behind the scenes at Fox because it applies to you, the viewers. I found a nonprofit journalism group called Project Veritas. It's going to help put that out tomorrow, so tune into them. But as for this heat wave across Texas, you can see what it's doing to AC units. This one. Okay, so here's where I start getting split brained on this. And there's more. <laughs> We're not done yet. So I have an appreciation for people who adhere to good etiquette, but I also have an appreciation for people who are not afraid to break the rule in an effort to fix something that's broken. So usually I'm pretty definitive on how I feel and things about uh, how I feel about things. This one, honestly, I'm split brained on, but there are some behaviors that I'm not. Okay. <clears throat> I am, I am 
one of those individuals that leans very heavily on the, you know, not making a spectacle of things unless it's absolutely necessary. Somebody's attacking me and my character or, or they're coming after me physically, then I, I, I won't have an issue standing up for myself, like at all. I really won't. Um, and it depends on the whole character thing. It depends on how bad the slings and arrows are coming out, right? <clears throat> but when it comes to something like this, is if an employee is feeling suppressed or they're feeling like they're not getting support from the work, I tend to keep that stuff appropriate, meaning, and, and what I view as appropriate, and meaning is that have the conversations with people. At the end of the day, look, the new station is the employer and they are in control of the work. So if somebody wants to publish something <clears throat> that could be damning, you know what? They're the employer. They're the ones that hired the employer. They're the ones that have the option to be able to say, no, we're not going to publish that. We're not going to run with it. And then the employee can take that and do something somewhere else if it doesn't conflict with whatever agreements that they've signed, right? So, so I am a firm believer in that. And if this, if the station managers and if the if the producers are the ones that are saying this is the direction that we're going to go in, this is where we're going to take the information, this is what we believe in, then you know what? If that's not your if that's not your bag, if that's not what you believe, make an exit and go somewhere where they support your voice. Simple, right? That's how I feel about it, at least that piece of it. But like I said, I'm split brained, <clears throat> but. I'm also not a proponent of what happened with that as well, okay? Because there's more to this. And the other piece of what has happened, which I'm vehemently against, is the secret recording that April Moss did with one of the engineers. Now, at the same time, <laughs> here's, I also get split-brained on this as well. I totally disagree with how the conversation went on behalf of the engineer. So let me play that for you. Hey, Chuck. So I saw what you did on the air yesterday. Yes. <clears throat> you, you may get terminated for that. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. All right. So, so you're, you're okay with that then? I understand if... CBS decides to let me go. I do understand that. Why would you do that? You know, basically, that's the most selfish thing I've ever seen in all in 36 years working there without even a close second. Because you don't give a crap about anybody else, you know, and, and, and like if you get terminated, which you might, and then the burden is going to place on other people, you couldn't care less. It's just all about April Moss. Well, that's not that's very, very unfortunate. I mean, I know we've had some talks and, you know, and all of that, but I didn't know that you were that kind of person. I'm not that kind of person. You are April. You are. You're all about April and that's it. That... Here, here, I'm April and here's my stance. Regardless of the burden, this is going to put on anybody else. Well, I've tried to go through all of the the direct channels that what do, you think, what do you think going on the air and getting fired is going to do? Do you think that's going to change their rules? Well, it's not just CBS, but it's a lot of organizations and corporations across the country are that are that are enforcing unfair, un, unfair standards on people. I can't believe you did that. I just can't believe it. I mean, we had again, we had some chats offline and, you know, and, and some texts, you know, but but to go on the air and, and just blatantly disregard. In any protocols, you know, and, and again, place all of this burden on other people. You know, I mean, I'm going to recommend that you get terminated. I'm going to recommend that. I'm not going to stand up for you. Because that was as blatant as, 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 as anything I've ever seen. Okay, but I've I've gone through all the natural channels with HR. I've sent them documentation stating that this is against federal law. I understand law. that. I saw all that email. So do you think that going on the air and saying something and getting fired is going to change anything? I mean, what, what, what could you possibly have thought what effect that would have other than you getting fired? I was hoping that they would understand and realize that they that that enforcing these policies on people that are against federal law is not okay. 
So you're going to go on there and say that, and you think that they're going to say, oh, you know what? She's right. We're going to go ahead and change those now because she said it on the air. You really thought that. I was hoping there would be there would be a change. No, because not gonna be. the only change is going to be you know on our weekend weather person. That's the only change. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I hope you weren't listening to that while you were driving a car. Okay. So this gets even more complicated, right? Because she has now recorded a conversation with a senior level person in the station now. Uh, looking up the laws <clears throat> on recording in Michigan, um, Michigan is a one person authorization. Okay. Only one person has to approve, um, or authorize or give permission to be on a recording. The other person does not. Okay. So holy cow, this is now blown up even more. All right. And when I say, hold man, it, this is just one big fine mess. It's an absolute big fine mess. Now listening to that conversation. <clears throat> I listen, I have appreciation for both sides on this one. Okay. And what I mean by that is that if she did go through HR and did not get a resolution or I, who knows if HR helped out, I mean, I would hope that they stepped up and did the thing, but if they didn't <clears throat> or they didn't bring back a response yet, there's a lot of variables here. And I mean, literally, it's just like, I keep constantly thinking of all the different things. You know, she went to HR and started to demonstrate the proof of something of what it was that she was starting to believe and say and whatnot. Hopefully HR has something on, on file that can support that. If they didn't respond to it, yeah, she could be in the right, okay? But if they did respond to it and she just simply doesn't like it, now she's acting on her own free will. Now, let's take a look at the gentleman that was on the phone by the name of Chuck. He is one of the engineers over there. He's clearly been around for 36 years. <clears throat> I don't blame him for feeling the way he feels. I really don't. And if this was a conversation that was of two people that were, it was an individual that didn't have any influence in the organization, then you know what? I wouldn't have a problem with him chewing her out the way he did. All right. And speaking his and speaking his mind where he goofed up. And this is a classic, classic moment. And unfortunately, this is going to come back and bite him. And that is that he openly came out and stated that he is absolutely going to push for her termination. That is never something that you want to put on a recorded call. Now, he probably didn't know he was being recorded. As a matter of fact, I'd bank my next paycheck that he did not know that he was being recorded, but that's something that you never want to say. This is th that kind of conversation on his part, <clears throat> not that it was right or wrong in how he feels. It's what he conveyed is the one thing is a perfect example of how companies need to help managers understand what they can and cannot say <clears throat> when it comes to dealing with employee relations. If you come out and say, I'm going to promote your termination, oh my gosh. And clearly in this case, the person's recorded it. Now you've got evidentiary support of some kind, right? <clears throat> so this is not done yet. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is not done yet. <clears throat> There is a lot of legal wrangling that's going to wind up taking place here. The company is also dealing with, I'm sure, the major CBS parent corporation, which they are licensed under. This is just a big, big, big mess. Huge. And we don't even know the details. All we know is what has been presented forward. Now, I'm also going to throw something out there as a possibility that this may or may not be politically motivated, meaning that somebody could or could not, I know I'm saying so, so I'm, I'm like so noncommittal on this one, but I'm trying to make a statement here. This could be a politically motivated thing, meaning that somebody could be pushing their individual preferences and their belief system out there. 
I mean, clearly it's what the person believes, but I mean belief system that's attached to a political opinion. You know, I'm not going to get political, right? I'm just not going to go down that road. But if that is the case, this is a really great example <clears throat> as to why businesses also need to rein in the conversation and rein in the behavior and the expectations around politics in the workplace because it just doesn't belong. There's nothing out there that says that you can't have a political belief. Matter of fact, you are entitled to it as a, as a citizen of the United States. But as an employer, yes, you can squelch that at work to a point and make sure that people understand that take your political conversations outside of the workplace. We're here to focus on the business at hand. We understand that people get really passionate about that. And we have seen that so much over the last eight years that it's now to a point <clears throat> where companies are really struggling to how do you deal with this, right? How do you deal with it? And that's setting the expectation. We support people having their own political beliefs, but you know what? This is, an, uh, this is a neutral zone. We don't have those conversations in here, right? Think of Star Trek, the neutral zone, right? Those are the kinds of conversations you, you can have outside of work. They don't belong here in the workplace. We need to focus on the business at hand, taking care of our customers, and making sure that we're doing everything that we can to keep this company up and viable so that way that you, you want a paycheck just as much as we do, right? So the only way to make that happen is that we find a way to work together. So this isn't over. This, this, there's going to be ramifications on this long coming but I wanted to share with you a couple of things. Now, first off, you're probably sitting there thinking like, how did she actually get the recordings? Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. Social media is a great place to mine videos, audio, all sorts of stuff, right? This is, this is so full of holes that I, I couldn't help but bring this one forward because it's, it's currently going on. There's, there's all these back and forth. There is no definitive right or wrong as a whole, but there's a lot of little right and wrongs throughout the whole situation. And you guys are going to run into this stuff sometimes, maybe not at this level, right? But you're going to run into these types of things. So your ability to think critically is really important. And this is where it has to come in. You have to take a look at the whole situation and make that step back, regardless of how you feel of what the person did or didn't do. You, this is, this is, this is a great test in HR of, of having an objective mindset when it comes to dealing with employee issues. <clears throat> this is a big issue. And the mindset is, is that, look, you may have to be part of disciplining the chief engineer if the company on the background determined that he said things that he shouldn't have said. That's a little correction that has to be made or a correction. I don't know how big or little it would be, but a correction that would need to be made. Make sure that he never says anything like that again. On the flip side, <clears throat> you also have to take a look at your inner workings and information and, and you know, documents and um, protected covenants to really make sure you set the expectation that if you have a grievance with the organization, you don't put it on air, right? You don't go blabbing that stuff within the confines of what you can and can't do under the law. <clears throat> now imagine that this could be starting a trend in the media. People already don't trust the media. And then there are people that watch it intently and take it for everything that comes at them. What if somebody said something that was in a, not only inappropriate, but was wrong? And I'm not saying what these two ladies did. That's not what I'm talking about. What if somebody came out <clears throat> and lied about what the leadership was doing? What if a, a, a person who came out and said, I've been sexually molested while I've been at work, only to come and find out that, in fact, it is not the truth? What if somebody did that online? We're not here talking about the rights of the individuals because you who are listening are in the HR seat, which means that we have to think about how do we handle these situations 
when they come up because they're difficult, they're complicated. It requires a lot of knowledge of past precedences, past experiences. That's the reason why I bring this stuff forward. Everything that, you, if you've been listening to this podcast for a long time, we've brought a lot of really good information forward. And I would bet that you have pulled information from it to be able to apply to somewhere else. And that's how humans learn, adults specifically. It has to be relevant. The more you read, the more you listen, the more you educate yourself, <clears throat> the more you're able to execute appropriately. That's why it's so important. That's why I push getting your membership to the HR resources site. It's $9 a month for an exhaustive amount of HR information and news that is coming in that you can take, you can apply, you can have those reserves in your brain. It's like, oh yeah, I remember when this happened, this is how the situation played out and plug and play those little elements into your own company because I guarantee you in your career you will have at least one person that steps out of line publicly and vocally to do somewhat something similar to what we were talking about today and it's going to be a huge mess and if you don't know where to start and if you don't have a vision of the end result you are really going to get stuck in the middle and the mire of all of the craziness that's about ready to come on your way. 